podcast is brought to you by The Unpack Show, a podcast where we interview the most self-made visionaries who have the ability to positively impact the lives of people. Hello, family, and welcome to The Unpack Show podcast with myself, Janice Baloui. Please join me as I sit down with guests to have meaningful conversation where we share ideas, opinions, and experiences that are about helping you to improve your life. Today, I'm joined by one of the most amazing young lady, Lebu Kutumela. Lebu is a passionate young lady who lives to inspire youth to stay encouraged, focused, and to never lose hope in life. And just like many teenagers, Lebu grew up from a village just outside of Mokopane town in Limpopo province. Despite of all challenges most teenagers go through, Lebu lived most of her teenage years in church until she finished the matric to further her studies and she recently got married to one of the most intelligent men. Lebo, welcome to the show. It's a pleasure to have you. Oh, thank you so much, Sam. Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing over there? I'm so much excited. Thanks for yourself. I'm doing great. Yes, sir. <laughs> so, Lebo, um, you know, as teenagers, mm. we have so many challenges going on in our lives. And yeah. for you, what helped you to stay focused? In your life um as for me what helped me to stay focused in life is just simply knowing what i want do you understand okay yeah i just knew what i wanted and automatically i just had to pay focus on what i wanted and then also what motivated me is um the background my family background i come from a very disadvantaged family and then as we grew up seeing the kind of life that we are living around and then to myself but you know what i don't want to live like this for the rest of my life yeah I to make change yeah i think that's what also motivated me the most the background that i come from yeah thank you <laughs> so uh how did your the background you grew up play part in terms of you being focused because uh, one challenge that I can pinpoint is that most teenagers can say that I come from a poor background. I come from a background that is disadvantaged. Therefore, that's why I can never be able to, uh, to, to reach my goals and to stay focused in my life. But for you, how did your background pay, pay, I mean, play part in terms of being, helping you to stay focused? Okay, thank you. Um, my many people, their background can disadvantage them, right? You're right. And then some of us, our background has, you know, has made value in our life. Firstly, I used to tell teenagers that, you know what, in life, you have to have a role model. The person who is my role model is apparently a person who also comes from the same background, you see. Yeah. And then he, when we sat down and talked about life, he told me, well, you know what, <laughs> this kind of situation cannot be a permanent situation. It's possible that this and this can happen and through this and this and that. And as we know that um, your role model is someone whom you are looking up to. So automatically the steps that he follows, that's where I also want to step. And then, yeah, that's why I never felt comfortable seeing, seeing my background being like that. Okay, so uh, what helped you? It's having a role model in your life. Yeah. And that role model, the part they played in your life was to kind of help you navigate your life so that you can stay focused and to never drift away. Yeah, to hold my hand, you know, open my eyes, you know, so that I will be able to see the unseen and see life in, in a different way. Yeah, that's what I can say. Wow. So tell me a bit about your background and how you grew up, your childhood development. Okay, in my childhood development, actually, you know, the reason why I used to tell people that there is no what you call them go. Mm. I know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Because that's where apparently I come from. I was not um, what you call a Craig, you know, brilliant student, learner. Uh-uh. That's mm. not what, that, that was not me at all. I was just an average student, you know, coming from a very disadvantaged background, um, focused in life, knowing what I want, being able to choose friends. You know, I was very much aware and sensitive to association because I grew up with the mentality of, of that 
um, your association, the people whom you keep around, it's either they can make you productive or unproductive. So I grew up, you know, wanting always to be productive in life, you see. Mm. And then, yeah, that's how I managed to face a lot of things in life and manage to pass them, yeah. So speaking of friendships, how, how did you go about choosing the right people who should be in your life and staying away from the people who are not supposed to be in your life? How did you manage to choose friends? Because I think this is the most difficult decision we have to make in life. And most of us are unable to make that decision. So for you, how did you go about making that decision? Um, by just seeing, by just looking, and then listening to the relevant people. There are people by long worry, you know what, they are available right there. Mm. That's good to tell you that so much in your role models, right? And yeah. those people would always tell us, you know what level? A bad company always corrupts a good character. Mm. Be careful. The association that you keep, you know. So, yeah, that's what automatically turns me on. And then he, I would also ask, how do I know that this one is a wrong association? They would tell me. So I all, you know, I grew up as as a young lady. Way long ago, I always wanted to know. I always wanted to know more. I would ask. Yeah, that's how it it transpired. Wow, that's amazing. So, uh, it seems like for you, what helped you? It's more of observation. You are a very observant person. You observed how person lives, so that you can decide that you know what how this person is. They should be in my life. And the way you observed other people, they were not supposed to be in your life. So observation is the one thing that helped you. Yeah, observation and focus. So, uh, you spoke of your role model. Uh, yeah. Who's your role model and why is that person fit to be the person you look up to? Okay, apparently my role model is my biological brother. Oh. <laughs> yeah, That's interesting. I say that, you know, because he's the kind of a person who grew up very close to me. I saw everything about him. So it was very easy for me to detect a lot of things. Mm. I mean, yeah, so when I grew up, I did not know anything, really. But then I looked at him. You know, he became my role model before he can even be aware that he is my role model. Wow. That kind of life that he lived. You know, he was just that kind of a person way long where everyone will always applaud him. And if I can tell, the person that I'm talking about, when he graduated his metric, he got five distinctions. Mm. And the other one will have a six and stuff. Okay, and then he is an is a, is, a, is a civil engineer, as I say. And I was always interested in engineering. Mm. So then, as far as I was interested in engineering, and then he is also preparing engineering faculty. Then, in terms of academics, I looked up to him, and then I always wanted to to follow the steps that he followed. And now he is not only my role model in terms of academics, okay. he's also my role model in terms of life as a whole. Mm. The kind of life he lived. You know, he lived in front of my eyes. I saw him living his his you know his youth circlehood in front of me. I saw how he was so very much confident about life. Mm. And then yeah, apparently he was the kind of a person, every answer that I have in life, he will answer for me. He will always motivate me. He will always make me to do more. So again, not only in academics and life as a whole, also in spirituality. Mm. The, you know, the level I am now in spirituality, church things, is because of him. Because I'm now talking about a pastor who is pioneering a very big ministry in Port Elizabeth. Oh, that's and amazing. <laughs> that is the, the, the path that I'm also following as well. Um, I'm a, I know, as you know, that I'm a, I'm a coordinator of things at church. So, you know, my brother, John, you know, he's just, he, he just became my role model in any area, any area of my life. And I'm so much, you know, 
I'm so much blessed if I can say it to have him in my life. Yeah, wow, thank you. that's amazing. So you have two brothers. Uh, which one in particular are you talking about? The one that I'm talking about now, it is the first one, John. Where does he live right now? I know that he has a ministry. Yeah, he's now residing in Port Elizabeth. So and how, then he's how, also working that side. He's a, he's, a, he's a civil engineer. Okay, so how often do you communicate in terms of him helping you to navigate your life? You know, the kind of a bond we have. Oh my God. Mm. <laughs> Words can never be... Like, we talk almost every day. Even today, like, where I am now, like, he's, he's still, you know role modeling me he will always want to find out i will always also want to find out well how far things no those kind of things we talk almost every day yeah. you know it doesn't end no the bond is too strong so uh you, you you seem to be absolutely doing absolutely well in your life and for someone who's looking from a distance they may think that uh you know what Lebu always got it uh got it covered you know Lebu is doing well so is there any kind of challenge you've ever went through in your life and how did you manage to move firstly i say i repeated my grade 11. Okay. that was very it was a shock <laughs> apparently yeah and then he, the reason why it was a shock to me is because i even received pressure from the teachers that thing Yahore, your first brother you know come out of here with five distinctions the second one come out came out with a four distinction now here you are a failure mm. oh my god <laughs> so how was, was it like some, it was something else no they gave me that pressure i was stressed on myself and they also gave me that pressure but then today i thank them if i can say because that is also one of the things that made a very large impact in me because it just affected my confidence for mm. that at that time but i have learned so yeah, that period of me repeating, you know, it was a very, very, very hard moment for me. But then as I say that my role model was always there for me. He's the one who, you know, made me to come back, feel myself again. Well, you know what? In life, we fall, we raise, we run again. Don't fall and sleep there. Fall, stand up, dust yourself and continue with the race. And that's exactly what I did. And that's absolutely what made me to be where I am today. Yeah, so that was, you know, a little bit of... <laughs> <laughs> so it seems like having a role model in your life has played a very huge, huge part in terms of so helping you to very, build your life. Yeah, very, very huge. And that's what I always tell my youth, my teenagers you know what it's very much phenomenal it's very much vital to have such because i know for myself and i know also about the people whom i know by longer live or not they they have the test the kind of testimony that i have well you know what if it wasn't for my role model i don't know where would i be in life mm. because many teenagers they don't like maybe they don't understand why do they have to have role models mm. and a role model is someone whom you know wherever that you want to go how can you be a doctor while you don't even have one doctor William or personally you know like how will you know that for for you to become a doctor what are the things that you have to do what are the challenges that some some doctors meet and how do they overcome a simple thing out how do you apply how do you, those kind of things that's the reason why everyone needs a role model mm. so i'm so much confident about this so uh you you have an interest uh level in youth empowerment especially young ladies in terms of sustaining their youth cycles so where does this desire come from yeah i'm so very much interested in that especially young ladies you're right the reason is because i have seen i've seen a lot of things mm. i've talked to many ladies crying weeping i've seen situations and you know that's why even the balance is that people perish because of lack of knowledge mm. we perish because we don't know and that's why sometimes we will even feel like you can you know you can just climb a mountain and shout hey ladies listen here this is what is happening 
I mm. live my 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 ladyhood in a very careful way. <laughs> to mm. be honest, I was very careful, and I was taught. Mm. And then the kind of stories that we see every day, our ladies, you know, I was telling this other youth that, you know what, look at you, maybe only the street or your community. How many ladies have graduated only metric? Mm. You can find out that it's only 20%. Oh, okay. Out of that 20%, how many of them went to tertiaries? Ah, 10%. Out of that 10%, how many managed to come back? graduating oh two percent this is very bad because us ladies there's a tendency that you know we are the weakest and which is very wrong we are not if you want to be strong you can i used to tell ladies that you know what these things of dating jolling what what mm. I did you chain? they don't go out of fishing out of style they will forever be there but then there's a time for everything i used to tell my youth that you know what there's time for everything mm. there's time for everything be conscious and be aware of the time that's what sustains me not as my my lady circle i always knew that you know what my right time for me to dwell in this kind of things it will come for now let me focus on one two three and then when the time came came <laughs> you know and i got the best marriage in the whole world yeah. i got the kind of a husband that i always wanted mm. my life is the way i planned it to be mm. you see yeah so and then another thing that i, I want to share is that one of my role model taught me this he said that you know what live what's happening in life and i always tell teenagers like that in life there are two p's p is capital letter p which is pain and pressure this piece you cannot run away from them no you can't it's pain and pressure if ever you start with pain you end with pleasure for the rest of your life or you will start with pleasure and you end with pain for the rest of your life. Now, wow. what is pain? You know, we grew up with our carinars, you know, when we were going to school, we had dedicated to the whole, no men will come and propose you. And our peers, by that time, they will come to school, but pick up a critical Life was seem like it's good for them. And for us, it's like we are not, you know, kind of rebising. So, but then as we say today, where are they today? They started with pleasure. Now they have ended up in pain. Some of them did not even manage to reach metric. So if you start with pressure, automatically life can will push you to pain. But if you start with that one yellow what do they think it's pain? Hey, ask us, we will tell you. You will end in pleasure. So that is it. Our our teenagers, you know, sir, if you can go to the hospital, mm. a high rate of HIV, STI it's young people mm. and those are the young people that i'm telling you about those who went for pleasure before pain mm. so no. I, I can talk a lot let me just stop here <laughs> <laughs> no i want you to get deep into it because you know uh at this particular moment in life this one thing that i'm starting to realize and i think i'm awakening to this truth that in today's generation, as the youth of today, we are the ones who are responsible for building a better tomorrow. Because yeah. our parents in today, they are already at their 40s, 50s, 60s, and 70s. You know, yeah. And there will be a point where they will pass away with what we call death. And we will be the ones who will be remaining. And as we remain into this world, what is it? that we are going to do what is it that we are going to teach the coming generation so if we cannot prepare ourselves in this generation there will That's absolutely true. be nothing that we will be teaching to our next next coming generation who will be the yeah. kids of tomorrow so you know you are talking about two most important things the two piece i really really love that you say it's pleasure and pain so hey. can you take me through the process of how one should navigate their lives around those peas? Because you say you have to start with pain and the pleasure will come later on in life. You know, last yeah. week I was having an interview with, with Mr. Mulemela. Hey. I know you know them, the, the pastor. So he says that he, 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 he actually uh, compares success or aligns success with pain 
for you to be successful in life there has to be a pain that you go through and that pain will be the one that mold you to be who you want to be so those two piece how can one align them in their lives okay the two piece you know the way i illustrate them they work in all all areas of life right Mm. And then let me talk about academics. How can you align it in your academics? Or how can we distinguish it? How can we make it clearer so that one can understand, right? Yeah. In terms of academics, there's a time whereby we did not sleep, say. Mm, <laughs> that mm. was pain. Yeah. There was a time whereby you have to cross night, the whole night. Or, you know, if you are... you. You are sleeping, you will even enter your feet inside cold water. You know, mm. making sure that you know I have to I have to know this theory. I have to know this. Tomorrow is the final day. Whereby somebody else out there comfortably sleeping. You know, mm. it's even in you see, they it, it's pleasure for him. For you, you are in pain. Mm. But then now let's look at the results with these two candidates. Which one is going for pleasure for the rest of their life and which one is going to suffer for the rest of the life? Mm. So, you know, you are very right. The way some Limala has said it, pain. Pain is the best, is the best, you know, I don't know how can I call it, the best, best bridge or path towards success. Mm. And then the same applies to life as a whole. That's what I explained earlier on. So, yeah. It's a life in life we choose. You you ever choose that you want to enjoy now or you will enjoy later. And you know the way life it is, like it's like it's a principle. You cannot run from it. That's mm. how it is. You you choose. If you start with this one, you end with this one. If you end with this one, you start with this one. Mm. That's how it is. And that's how I used to tell my teenagers. And that's how us, some of us, we have been taught this kind of things at an early age, and we understood. That's why today now, oh, amen. <laughs> mm, yeah. So, uh, being married as a young lady, what is it that is helping you to sustain your marriage? Um. Now, when we talk about marriage, say, I'm sorry, I will, I will have to go a little bit in spirituality. Okay. <laughs> because I, um, for me. And as for my own theory, mm. marriage is spiritual. Marriage was designed by God, and it is the will of God for us to enjoy in marriage. Mm. So there are a lot of things that I can discuss in marriage, but the most, most, most important thing, Kelongori, marriage is sustained. Now, as a young lady, I've been taught before I entered marriage, and I'm still learning, and I'm still going to learn. Mm. And it's working for me and it will forever work for me. Mm. I have learned submission as a young lady. I have learned that, you know, ladies, if, but if they don't learn submission, they must just stay away from marriage. Marriage is not a partnership. It's mm. an authority. Mm. You are under your husband and is subject to him. Wow. It's not possible that in marriage, Ili Nali has been Jagarabadi Tojala Paka Makarina. So, as a lady, I have learned to respect my husband's ego by being submissive to him. Mm. I take him as my master. That's how my marriage is succeeding. I'm, I'm, I'm taking my, you know, my, my, you know, my pastor used to say that, you know, for marriage to be successful, one have to know her or his part and end there. Mm. I know my line as a wife in my marriage. My husband knows his line. I know that nah, I stop here. I'm not a head in the house. I'm a neck. Wow. I'm not an advocate in my marriage. I'm not the boss. I am a helper. Even the Bible says that a wife is a helper to the husband. So I know, or if I can, you know, I, I can pass this line, my line, and then I go to his, I want to be a head. That's where the fights are going to start. That's where confusion in, that's how confusions in marriage starts. I know. 
and then this this is the principle say it works only you know for christians and non-christians if we check the marriage counselings, they talk about authority knowing your line and stopping where you belong you cannot be a wife and a husband at the same time yeah yeah so this one is proof that it's proven both god marriage counseling and also in spirituality and also in the word of god so hmm. myself that's how my marriage is sustained i know where i end i know my story and i end there and yeah <laughs> so take him from what you're saying uh you say that number one submission is the most important thing in yeah. marriage number two knowing your part in a marriage is the most important thing yeah number three and as a woman you have to understand that you are the neck and your husband is the head of the family yeah wow that's amazing level so you are saying that before you got into a marriage you were taught right yeah. and right now as you are into your marriage you are still being taught i'm still learning yes so my question is as young ladies as young men or i would i would say that as teenagers we we don't know the importance of having to learn about relationship at this stage where we are because we think that we will learn at the later stage when we are grown up so what advice would you give to mo- to most of the youth in terms of preparing themselves for the marriage okay um Preparing yourself to the mess to the marriage is very much important as youth. Mm. It's very much phenomenal because, as I said later on, that we perish because we don't know. Mm. We perish for the lack of knowledge. Now, learning about marriage or relationship, you don't have to take that path only when you are in. It. Even as a single lady, we had to learn these kind of things. Like, for example, myself, I was single. And yeah, but I was learning. I was always, you know, if I get this kind of a book talking about marriage, I was always sad. And then that's where now I came to a point whereby I even wrote in my diary, well, you know what? The time I will get married, this is the kind of a man that I want. I wrote them down. One, two, three. And then knowing why do I want to, why do I want this kind of a man i knew that no marriage is not it's not a child's play yeah yeah so i i i knew the kind of a man that i always wanted before i was even we were even dating or what so these kind of things are very much important and they don't just start in learning about marriage say. it starts in learning about relationships Mm. so speaking of uh, learning uh, I heard you talking about reading books different books so what is the one book that you'd recommend people even if it not be, it, may, it may not be marriage but what is the one book that you'd recommend for youth to read that will help them to build their lives um, my first book I love that book and I can, I can also recommend it to someone Wailonghori, you want to be successful in this. Mm. The book is called Mingle and Single. Mm. Hey, as a single, if you go through that book, it talks about all stages in your singlehood. How do you, you know, how do you hold yourself? How do you self-invest? You know, one thing that I was very much interested when I read that book is that, you know, before i can enter into a relationship i must invest more in myself self investment what do i mean by self investment number one, i must invest what knowledge because marriage is not success marriage is not um achievement 
He wonders that two is better than one. It's not married that made me the person I am today. Yeah. But then for because I I invested more in myself and the person I met, he has invested more in himself. When we meet, hey, we are just a bomb. There's wow, no that's amazing. We cannot we cannot fight for little things because we came with maturity because self investment brings maturity. I know what I want. He knows what is what he wants, and we know what is wrong and right. Mm. And also investment. That book it also taught me about you no know, investing more in myself in life maturity and also in I cannot say academics but or. Uh, maybe finances status yeah investing more in my in status I, I never wanted you know maybe because we don't have um the same perspective of mind myself i never wanted to be you know a housewife <laughs> no, <laughs> i never wanted i never wanted to be that kind of a wife i worry yeah daddy went to work i will be a housewife Daddy's back. No, I wanted to be that kind of lady that when we go to work, I wear my stiletto. We go together. Mm. I go to meeting. <laughs> we got, you know. I always wanted to be that kind of a lady. Yeah. And then apparently that's where, yeah. <laughs> so that book taught me a lot. Self investment. It also taught me about compatibility. Mm. Finding the right, like someone who, who who is compatible with you. Your type, how do you detect your type? You, you understand? Mm. And then another thing, it taught me about love. Wow. Love. You know, the word love is so big. The word love is so big. Mm. Love starting with loving yourself. And in loving yourself, that's how you will be able to, you know, like, to separate yourself from a lot of things you know as a young lady if you like yourself you know what i can't afford to do one two three i can't afford to be slept by all men no i respect myself to the extent that i can allow myself just to be a bike or a, dri- a, a driving school truck whereby just open my legs or everyone enters everyone no that's yeah. em- i don't love myself yeah. because one of the things also that i learned from my role model he gave me an example of you know when you go for license driver's license mm. when you learn to drive we use um that truck you're yeah, driving school remember that truck everyone who comes for driving uses that same truck mm. so that truck it's only for people to do what to learn driving after they learn they get their their their, their licenses they will go and buy their messages they will go and buy their, what? their dream cars so now wow like, Leo, like what you're saying uh <laughs> it just made me realize that in life taking care of yourself it's one of the most important thing. Yes, Thank you, you for that. You want to be you just if you want to be that um driving school truck or you want to be the Mercedes. Mm. So now I always want to be the Mercedes. <laughs> That's amazing hearing it from someone who knows what they want in life and someone who's driven in life. Yeah, so so uh, you guys can use you can you know even the sofa that it's like a jelly pot, everyone enters, but even you really like a mohonya gang. But by the time you get your hey, yo, you will know your Lamborghini. Ah, you, mm. you cannot drive it anyhow. You will know that this one is precious for me. So I always wanted to be a precious wife. I knew that you know what? I'm so I honor the man who's going to marry me because he's not gonna get me. So, uh, the time you spend working with youth, helping to navigate their life, what is it that you always emphasize when talking to them and why? Okay, there are, you know, I talk about a lot of things, but this two, academics and social life, Mm. In social life, I always tell my youth, teenagers, that they must 
first thing first association this one i will always talk about it because you know i have seen a lot of potentials in young young you know young still more they've been destroyed by the association mm. association is very powerful i don't like many they don't understand but association it, 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 it's very much powerful Mm. That's why I said that it, it, it can either make you productive or unproductive. So in social life, I always emphasize, guys, choose right association. Choose right association. And th- that, that's the beginning stage of success. Mm. Always be around people who will, who, who will make you see the beauty of life, who will make you talk. Because when you sit around people, I long they will lead you astray. Mm. This one is a principle. Wow! So like, it's what when you... we grew up, our grandmothers they used to tell us. What is it? See, yeah, she can lead you harang ito har. When we grew up, we started to read the Bible. Even God Himself said, "Bad company corrupt good character." Eh, eh. When we go to the motivational speakers, they say avoid wrong association. Then I ask myself, is this thing like this powerful? And I thought that this is very powerful. And many people are now in frustrations, in difficulties, in purposeless lives because of the association. Wow, that's amazing. So one thing you always emphasize, it's choosing the right association. Yeah. Having the right people who will help you to, for your life to be productive. And yeah. for you to know where you are going in life. Yes. Uh, what are your values? Mm. You know, the principle you have in your life that helps you to keep moving. Um, it's working in love. <laughs> mm. Yeah, it's working in love. The word love is a big word. Wow. So it, it seems like we there, there's still a lot that we need to learn about the concept of love yeah wow so amazing so uh in terms of building a better future as a youth of today what is the most important thing that we should put in mind the most phenomenal thing that as a young person you can put into your mind in bettering your future it's knowing and understanding that life It's what you make out of it. Mm. Yeah. If you can understand this, you are done with life. Life, it's what you make out of it. Yes. I love that. Wow. Leo, it's been a great pleasure to have you on the show, to be having this conversation with you because I knew for a moment that there's a lot that we can learn from you, especially as youth of today in terms of sustaining our lives and taking care of our lives. Thank you so much for the time that you've made to be available on the show. I know that you've got a lot on your head, on your side in terms of preparing for the June 16 event. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. Thank you for joining the podcast. If you would like a comment to be recorded on the podcast, send it to our WhatsApp number 061-453-0960. 061-453-0960.